The final video I have for you is a slide presentation I gave to a class. I reported my attempt at a situationist derive. I hope it makes sense. So if you weren't here last class, you may have noticed this octagonal canvas on the wall. I want to talk about how I had some ideas for it and how I kind of gave them up over time. And all that will be a background for a real life derive that I took on Monday. So I was thinking about my past work and how I could connect that to how I would do a painting again. This is a sketch from high school. <laughs> this is, again, what it looks like. This is the front side, and this is the flip side. So I figured I would use all my materials at hand. These are all the acrylic paints I brought from Florida, and I still haven't used them. I have about three ideas, or at least I did have them. This is idea number one, in which the letters H and A for Ha ha, would circle around the center of the canvas. Here's a second design for it. Right? Use lowercase letters instead. And I was kind of diagramming the space I could use. Here's a second idea where I have homage to the octagon. After Albert, Al Albert's his famous series is homage to the square. One way I thought about designing this was to use all of my paints and mix them randomly, like in the bottom right octagon. I also thought about making some sort of installation and in, in this project, light would shine on dark areas of the canvas to make a kind of overall flat color. That is, unless you stood in front of it, the canvas would tell, tell you to move. But the thought of making this installation was kind of exasperating. So I decided to look at kind of the world around me and think about octagons a little more. This is just a sign outside on the bulletin board. On the back side of the square canvas, you can find an octagon. I searched on my compu computer for, for images, and this is just a funny image from the internet that I had downloaded. Also in my, in my search, I, I found the word octagon in a list of words, and this is a Scrabble word list. And then I realized there are all kinds of ox words at my disposal, but I didn't use any of that. I also found examples of octagons in art history. This is Brunelleschi's dome for the Florence Cathedral, and it had an octagonal drum. And this is Rene Green. I forgot the title of this, but I have it here. It's standardized octagonal units for imagined and existing systems. So I wanted to sh somehow show the failure of, of having a sustained interest in my ideas. And I would present it somehow. And I figured a science project display would be a good way to do it. And I decided it would be called octagony, as in octagon agony. But I decided finally I wasn't interested in octagons at all. And to continue this project, I would have to forget about oct octagons entirely. And to do that, I would go on a derive. OK. So forget everything I told you. And By the way, you may have noticed that the audio in this talk is highly edited. I want to just show you how I did that right here. Use all of my paints and mix them randomly. Anyway, back to the talk. Of town before 9 a.m. and then return after 5 p.m. But this was already Sunday night, and I couldn't figure out how to activate the car, so I didn't do it. Monday morning, I woke up at a quarter to 1 p.m. I now had the whole day ahead of me to go out into the city and at least explore the city side of Gallery. This is my most grotesque image, but I prepared with some hot dogs. I decided I would take the opportunity to work with my new camera and to think about photography a little bit. And I had a, a dumb idea. I headed west to the mission from my home, and I had this idea of a structured derive in which I would travel from one barbershop to another and ask patrons and people outside of barbershops they would recommend. I started with city haircuts because I had gone there three or four times, and it was only $7. And here you can see they turned the seven into an eight. I couldn't really bring myself to talk to anyone nearby, though, so. I just went inside and got a haircut. And I took this picture not with my Nikon camera, but with my Nokia cell phone. So I kind of lost interest in, in that Dariv idea. But instead, I went to do something useful. I needed to fix something on my bike, so I went to Valencia Cyclery. Basically, my light was turning off whenever I needed it to use it, so I, I took it in to be replaced. 
but it turned out it was just in demo mode. I wanted to give arbitrary rules one more try, though. As soon as I realized I wanted to avoid hills as I was on bike, I, de I decided to climb them purposefully. I wanted to be counterintuitive. From Market, I went west on Haight Street. I went up Webster and Fillmore, and I ended up here at Alameda Square. I suddenly got nervous as I realized I was surrounded by tourists, people who were without a dream agenda. I knew those full house kind of painted ladies very well, but the painted la lady ladies on the, on the playground is, is much lesser known. It was my first time seeing it, at least. I saw a guy walking around Alamo Square who looked like this, which I drew later. <laughs> I found him very particular because he had a particular uh, way of holding his arms. He had a long beard. The way that painters walk. Painters walk like that? <laughs> this is City Hall. Getting closer to the grounds, there was something I noticed about the grass. It was an octagon. <laughs> uh, I went into City Hall, and I knew that there was a show I was meaning to see and it was the perfect opportunity to see some of my friends work in the, on the basement floor. And Scott is in it. So I took a picture. So I started to hear a soft roar in the distance. I followed it to this fancy event that was taking place. A sign advertised it as the 30th annual Good Government Awards. And I felt <laughs> underdressed. And I didn't stay around to talk to any, anyone or eat any hors d'oeuvres. So I got out of there. I took some pictures of the main rooms. I don't know. It seems like the hall is important thing. And I just took a second to, uh, to just appreciate the architecture. And so this is a view on the other side of City Hall. And as you can see, the, the light was changing. I was curious about the view 180 degrees from that position. At this point, I was feeling hungry, and I, I devoted the rest of my trip to going to In-N-Out Burger in Fisherman's Wharf. Where? In-N-Out. Yeah, the Fisherman's Wharf. Oh, there's one in Fisherman's Yeah. <laughs> Polk and lemongrass smelled very good, but I, I didn't go there. I sensed a kind of awkwardness about going in alone. But in and out, I was okay going in alone. I got a couple pictures of this place, and a panhandler started posing. I wondered how, if he practiced that pose, or some, if it's something he always did. Maybe I should have asked him, but I didn't even think of it. I just wanted to avoid him and get, and get my food. So much for meatless Mondays, which is something I was thinking about earlier in the week. I was so forgetful that I, I didn't realize that it was actually my second kind of beef on a bun of the day. And had I realized this habit was forming, I probably would have done something different. So returning home, I noticed this kind of apartment building. It seems like a, a mountain of cubicle homes. But I, still, I felt like I wanted to live, to live there. And I know this, this giant TV and, and this giant open window space. If this had any uh, effect on me, I, I, this is definitely the creepiest I felt to take <laughs> pictures. Yeah, so, so my light was working. It was not, the front light is not of much consequence, but I, at least I felt safer. Uh, if I had any sense of conclusion, I would kind of show the shape of my track, which would look like this. But that's not the way it really works. <laughs> it's far more irregular. So I was pretty happy with my haircut, but I used my dad's little pair of barber shears to refine it. I hope you enjoyed my videos. If you missed anything, keep watching. The DVD will loop. Goodbye. <laughs>